Hi. Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to see about the uh, uh, Docker. So this Docker is for uh, uh, as a beginner course. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to cover uh, oh, what is Docker and wh what is the advantage of Docker and and what is a container based application. And this course is uh, mainly for uh, for beginners as well as those who wants to start a host application in a content based application, they can go. Ahead. So in this uh, lecture, I'm going to cover with uh, with uh, a Docker I'm hosting in a, a Linux box with Ubuntu. And same thing, you can try it out with uh, Windows and Mac OS. The tips, installations, instructions will be different, but the objective will be the same. Okay. Uh, Okay, we'll see in the next lecture so uh, with the uh, other stuff. Thank you. Hi, in this lecture, we are going to see introduction about the Docker. Uh, actually, what is a Docker? Uh, so Docker is like, uh, suppose you want to install uh, any, any, depend, uh, any uh, application, so application has some dependency files. For example, if you take a .NET, you should install the dependency for of .NET framework and other SDK actually, which is required to, to run your thing. If you take a Java, you have to install some struts or deinstall something like that. You have to install. So for that environment, you have a dependency framework which is required. So it is there will be a chance of missing of that framework. For example. In a production, if you compare to UAT, there may be some dependency files will be there in a development box. When you when you hosting the application into a different environment, there may be chance of missing that file. So it is a very tedious to maintain of any uh, thing. So there may be the user, the person will be complaining like in my box it's working. I mean in development box it's working, but in UAT or uh, in production it's not working. So why? Because of uh, environment difference, something like that. To avoid that, uh, to avoid the complexity of that thing, uh, so Docker has comes with uh, a wonderful framework. So what definition is telling us, like Docker is a tool, it is easier to create, deploy, and run the application in a container. So, so I'll tell you what is a container uh, later. The container allows a developer to package applications with all parts of needs, such as libraries and other dependency, and and deploy that as a one package. Okay, so basically what they're telling is uh, they want to deploy the application in a container. Container is like a, a where I'm hosting my uh, virtual machine. So here it won't be a virtual machine. Instead of for uh, production won't be a one virtual machine and development we uh, will create another virtual. Instead of that, in single uh, virtual machine we'll host a different different container. So in single machine, we'll have a different different container. Each container will be a, a different uh, a thread. So it won't talk to each other. Okay. So you have to make a, a bridge or any network. Then only it will talk. Okay. That we'll see later. So basically, container is like a uh, it's a different different virtual machine, but but it will be running on the a single host machine or single VM. That is the thing. So so I can host my own, suppose I want to run a, a Linux environment. So for Linux or for example, uh, in Linux, you have a lot of flavors like Ubuntu, a uh, lot of steps are there. So if I want to run it, I have to install the Ubuntu machines, correct? That's a uh, thing. But when you host a, a Docker, you no need to install your Ubuntu machine. So you have to pull that image of, the, uh, of that uh, Ubuntu machines and you can host in that container. Okay. Okay. In uh, if you're not able to understand it, that's fine. In upcoming video, we'll see with some practical example. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Hi. Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to see about. Uh, what is the benefit of using Docker and whom is going to uh, benefit it? 
So, so when you are hosting any applications in your uh, or doc, uh, in your Docker containers, so uh, it will be easy to maintain because the so developer will develop the applications or it may be any web or any any based in the mobile or any application. So the, what they'll do is just they will package that application and they will give to the ops guys. Then ops guys will deploy into their uh, Docker containers. So it will be very uh, straightforward because all your uh, all your dependency file will be created as the image. Okay, so there is no need to you have to do an installation for that particular environment. So image will pull all your dependency file and it will be hosted on that container. So container is like a, a virtual machine and uh, where all your dependency of that framework will be pulled and it will be deployed into the container. So in this way, so what they are telling you is that Docker is a tool that designs to benefit both developers and the system administrators, and making it a part of many DevOps. So that so in that way, a developer and uh, operation guys will be very synced together. So there will be no chance of uh, missing of any uh, installations or any dependency file because your code itself will be as an image, your package will be as an image. So there will be no chance of uh, uh, missing of any dependency files. So they can focus on writing the code without worrying about their uh, ultimate infrastructure. Okay, so because why here it's working, why it's not working. So that's why Docker gives a lot of flexibility and reduce the number of system needed. And what will happen is, uh, suppose if you have production environment or UAT or this one, we have to create a different environment. But in this case, in single machine, we will host we will host like for development one container we will create for UAT we will create one more container. So in this we can reduce the thing and it also scalable. You can also create your own load balance, uh, uh, whatever infrastructure. The same thing we can use, but th that concept is they will do it through Docker Swamp. Okay, uh, I, I'm not going that level, but I want to cover very basic. Okay, so you can do it actually whatever uh, load balancing, scaling up, scale up. So all all the infrastructure thing you can do it actually. Okay. Uh, in next lecture we will see the architecture of uh, Docker. Okay. Thank you guys. Hi. Uh, in this lecture we will going to see a Docker architecture diagram. Uh, before that, most of the times I use the term uh, Docker image. Docker container. So Docker image is nothing but uh, suppose you want to uh, run a machine, a Ubuntu, and hosting a Tomcat application. I mean, as a web server. So what you have to do is you have to install Ubuntu, and after that you have to install the Tomcat Apache server. So these are the uh, basic installation you have to do. Once you create an image, the image, in image, you will create an image and specifying that I have to pull the uh, Ubuntu, I have to pull the Ubuntu, I have to do an installation of Ubuntu and I have to do the installation of Tomcat. So in single image, you will specify the dependency. So in that single image, you have the all the dependency you will specify, okay. So in this way, uh, it will be, and uh, so it will be easy to deploy. There will be no, no chance of missing of that two dependency files. So that is called Docker image, and we will see in the upcoming lectures with how to create a your own Docker image, okay, by using some Docker files, okay. Okay, what is Docker container? I think I said already. Docker container is where you are hosting my application, hosting the application into the system hosting the application into the uh, particular uh, machine. For example, I, I have some virtual machine and for example, if you see this diagram, uh, if you, you have a multiple uh, Docker container, you have a multiple uh, Docker container. This Docker host is running in a single machine. I have multiple containers. These each multiple containers won't talk to each other. It won't talk. All are independent to each other. So I can host, uh, for example, uh, this Docker container 
the first one will be say let us take my own development book the second one will be my uat book my third will be my production book so in this way you can create your own uh, uh, your uh, containers actually okay if you want to talk to each other you have to create a, some bridge some network bridge that we'll see later okay so that is a docker containers okay and networks so in order to talk to another containers usually networks is like uh, how we have a lan connection you have your own ip address for example if i want to talk to another container i need a network which i to talk because in that uh, network only we will specify the port for example i am hosting uh, one container on apps on app server app server i am hosting in one container and database i am hosting in another container okay in order to talk to each other the two container i want to talk to each other so in order to understand this container and this container to map it we need a network we have to specify the port number where this uh, container is located all the things we have to specify okay so that is a network data volumes data volume is like a volume drive okay see when you are hosting application when you are hosting application you have to mount it that uh for example i have a source code it will run in a container okay so once you run in a container you have to mount it to the the main uh, virtual box okay uh, for that we are using a data volume actually while running the container uh, while running the container at the run time uh, usually we won't mount it the volume okay so when you when you press any key it will be exited automatically uh but if you mount it it the data will be persisting okay uh that will see a real time example in upcoming videos okay uh so okay let us go into the uh, detail of architecture diagram till now i explain about the terminology of uh, diagram okay so usually what happened is uh, how docker uh, server i mean docker demo will talk to each other so docker client cli is a command tool where we will type all the commands so container is one command image is one command these are the commands actually so if i type that command in the cli through rest api it will talk to the dynamo server this is the heart of the uh, docker which will what will do is that this will uh, talk to the your uh, dynamo servers like your it will talk to your containers your images your volumes all these things this will take care to create a container so whatever you are typing whatever the input text you are specifying so dynamo has to do some instruction based upon that what i supposed to do say for example the docker cli they are telling that uh, you have to create an image so they will tell that hey please create an image so what they will do this dynamo file will understand whatever you are set of instruction you are giving in the cli the rest api will talk to this dynamo that dynamo will try to create an image okay first while creating image first it, uh, it, it will it will create an image in your local system so when you try to pull a image for example you are giving say you are trying to pull image of first it will try to check in your local system that image is already created in the system or not for example uh okay it will try to pull the image or not in your local otherwise it will go to your registry and it will pull it okay for example in this case i am typing as a docker pull i am putting a docker mail and that docker dynamo will try to check that image in the in your local system if it's not there it will try to pull from your uh, docker hub so docker hub is like a, it's a uh repository see here i have created my i have my own docker hub it is like a, how you have git rep okay this uh whatever you created your image you know that i have will push it to this repository okay uh, that i'll tell you how to create uh, like this uh, how to push it in your repository your own custom images here okay uh okay so so it, basically whatever your command line you are typing it will go to your docker host and try to find out that image is there in your uh, in your local system is not there it will try to uh, get it from your docker hub so uh, see ngxs has their own official docker image it will try to pull actually 
and uh, after that once you pull the image you have to host that image into a container in container only we are running the application so once you run, pull the image you have to host the image in a docker container okay uh, in le next lecture we will see the uh, uh, little bit architecture how the uh, how how what is the difference between like uh, uh, virtual machine architecture with the docker uh, architecture okay thank you guys hi uh, in this diagram uh, we are going to see a difference between a virtual machine and uh, docker right i mean a docker with the containerized application if you see the framework it's almost same but little bit difference is there see uh, when you uh, create a virtual machine okay so virtual machine is nothing but uh, like in my in my i can host any type of uh, machine my servers uh, in one in in a, in a single machine in a single system for example i have uh, say i have a virtual machine i have a virtual box of oracle so in if you open this virtual box so basically in my uh, virtual machine i have linux box i have windows servers all these things are there so each has different different servers and a different different flavors of os okay so in my windows operating system i can create a different different servers actually i have ubuntu i have a kali and i have centos i have a windows servers so this, these are the different different servers or different different machines are hosted in a single on this in this uh, 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 machine okay so if you go to this diagram so this is my uh, this is my virtual machine so i i show you know ubuntu uh, i mean uh, centos these are the virtual machine how it talks in single way through hypervision this hypervision will talks to my infrastructure or my kernel my os so that will under that will talk to each other actually because these are the different different os correct it has to understand for that you have to enable hypervision uh, how to enable hypervision so if you installing any uh, virtual machine you have to enable this hypervision so in bios setting you have to enable it you go to your google how to enable how to enable hyper i mean virtualization in windows 10 so usually they will say that in windows you have to change the uh, uh, yeah, you have to check make a settings of today i'm going to talk machine. how to okay. enable uh, if you search in google you will come to know that so i'm not going in on that okay so if you compare uh, virtual machines and uh, containerized application here i'm hosting all my uh, app apps uh, all the containerized app servers are in a single uh, in a single machine okay and uh, uh in a single machine by using the docker uh, thing see this docker file so uh, this if you compare this virtual machine and this app servers it will it will make an a fixed uh, for example this vm takes like let us take say 10 gb and this takes 20 gb this is 30 gb if you're not reusing this virtual machine it will be fixed you can't resize it but in container based applications for example which takes lay let us take uh, let us take 2 gb or 5 gb or 10 gb if it's not uh, using it will automatically resize once your container is not using it will automatically destroy as a default so what happened is automatically your uh, space is reduced your ram size is reduced your performance is like optimizing so that will be take care by a uh, docker you no need to worry actually internally that will take care if your docker is running or not it will check if it's not running it will automatically your your application will be destroyed and how it will understand so docker will talk to your os and that will talk to your infrastructure i mean your kernel in this way 
uh, hosting uh, uh, like uh, applications, different applications can be uh, taken care by the Docker uh, Demiurge. So this will take a uh, way to host which which port number. If you tell to the Docker that you know, which port number I want to host it, what is my network drive, all the things you can customize it. So that we'll see in upcoming videos. I think uh, you can be able to differentiate uh, virtual machine with your continuous application. Okay, so this is like a fixed. Okay, you can't increase it, and even memory also like a fixed. But in this case, everything will be optimized. Docker will optimize this container. Okay, suppose you are setting this is a like around 5 GB, and uh, Docker will if once you use the application and you want to dispose it the docker will automatically dispose it docker will check whether this has any uh, whether it still uh, container is running or not if it's not running it will dispose it okay so we will see the practical exam in upcoming videos okay okay thank you guys Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to explain how to install uh, a Docker, a Docker in a Windows, okay? So for Docker to install in Windows, these are the uh, prerequisites. It should be Windows 10, it should be 64 bit, and it should be a Pro. And uh, these are the versions should be there. And Windows Home, these are the things they are told. To, in order to work a Docker, you should enable Hyper-V. So to enable Hyper-V, and uh, you have to go to Control Panel. Uh, let me open Control Panel. Okay, if you go to Control Panel, uh, your Hyper-V should be enabled. This Hyper-V is like nothing but your virtual machine actually. So go to this one. It takes time to load. I click the system is very slow. Meantime, I pass the video for some time, taking some time. Okay, I'm using the video. So let me come here. So once you click the control panel, I just uh, came to this page. After that, go to turn off or turn on. So here, hypervision when setting will be there. You have to add that feature. Right now, I have enabled that one. Okay. Here, this one. This you have to check it. Okay. Then only it will run on this virtual machine. So since I already installed my Docker, so it is running in my Docker desktop. Okay. So follow these instructions. So come to here. Okay. Install the setup package here, 64 bit. Okay. Click this one. Install it. What setup file will be downloaded? And before doing, you should have 64 bit and at least minimum 4 GB of RAM. And these are the prerequisite, otherwise it won't run. And in BIOS setting, you have to enable this virtualization. To that, they have given some screenshot, I think so. So, if you go here, okay, they're telling that you have to enable virtualization. Whether enabled or not, they are asking to check. And, oh, here they have given the settings also, how to enable it, actually. These are the prerequisite. Before running the this one, you have to enable this Hyper-V. And uh, they are asking virtualization should be enabled. So to to enable that, 
So after enabling, you can able to see this one, this page actually. Actually, to enable this, you have to go to uh, bio setting. Also, you should enable it. to go to this bio settings and you have to enable it okay uh, then only uh, your docker uh, docker desktop will run so this is for windows system uh, i will tell the installation for uh, ubuntu okay so in my project i am going to use uh, ubuntu because it's very simple and straightforward okay uh, we'll see for uh, in next lecture, you see how to install uh, in Linux mission how to install Ubuntu okay, with the Docker. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hi. In this video, we are going to see the installation uh, installation for uh, Ubuntu for Docker. So these are the steps should be followed. So let me go to my cloud i have aws cloud so i will so already i installed one docker image so i will take one fresh instance so let me start this instance okay let me Here I have opened the machine. So I'm assigning to my elastic IP. Let me come here. So let me log into this box. Connect. Let me open my cookie. So you can use any cookie actually. I'm using this normal thing. So I'm going to connect my Ubuntu box. Okay.
So meantime I will mute it. Okay. So I have uh, connected my scooty. Okay. So okay. Now let me check. I have a Docker on it. You put Docker dot version. Docker is not there. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go to this of installation steps okay uh, okay now what I'll do is uh, okay now I'll put sudo minus y so it will uh, install the reason okay okay now I will get from this repo. Yes. So you have to follow this instruction. Later I will attach this file steps. Okay, now I will get this key. Download this file. Uh -huh. Okay. Now um, this is Paste it. Okay, it's done. So just get in this value. CD8. Okay. Now what I will do is I will inject the latest. Okay. Now, uh, actually, in Docker, we can download two versions. Actually, one is uh, one is a community version. Uh, another is the enterprise version. We are going to download uh, community version. This is a community version. Okay. Let me update this package. So once we added this in repo, here you will get a Docker uh, file in this package. Okay, now I will do sudo dot. Okay, this is the file. Why? Now we have to get the latest version. If you want, I can maximize it. Okay. Now I try to get the latest version because we are going to download the latest version. So we have five point. Take this. So if it comes here, we'll put this version. This is community version. And this also will be the same thing. So we have two. Okay. Let me copy and update it. So I'm going to get this version. document from here so here they are telling that we have to install oh up to here okay uh, I have to select up to here by one second I missed out this that's why
all the copy paste it, paste it here. Oh, already installed. Okay. So if you put Docker with version, yeah, it's installed with 19.0. So we have installed Docker in my Linux box Ubuntu. Uh, we can put Docker on help. These are the commands we are in next video. We are going to see. Uh, these are we are trying to try to take the basic command of that. Okay. Uh, so we have successfully installed uh, Docker in my open machines. Okay. So thank you guys. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Hi. Uh, in this video, we are going to see some Docker commands. So first we will try to make some hello world. So basically what we are going to do is, uh, this is the command. Uh, I'm going to, oh my session got expired. Okay. okay. So let me turn in the operation. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run an image. Okay, this is a custom image which is already there in the uh, in the Docker repo. Okay, I'll show you first. First, I'll run a Docker uh, one image called Hello World. So let me see what is happening. Okay, uh, actually I have to run this sudo. So Docker run. Actually, you have to map this. Uh, this you have to map it to user group. Okay. Then next time onwards, it won't ask this thing. Okay. Hello world. Docker run. So it's asking whether it's was doesn't exist. Login delay to the. I think. Uh, doesn't have any good. Okay. So what happened? I am trying to pull the image of Hello World. So see here, it's unable to find the image locally. So when you put Docker run, what happened is it tried to find out this image in your local system, whether you have created an image or not. Since I have installed freshly, uh, it won't be there. So what happened is it goes to my repo. So it's trying to get the latest of Hello World. So this is SHID and it's getting from my Docker image. And so you pull this image. If you put Docker of my images, see here, the Hello World has come. Okay. No, uh, I think, uh, so okay. it has pulled the image and it will dump into that image into my uh, local system. Let me run once again. Once again, uh, I have a command here. So, okay. Now, what we do is we take this example as output. Okay. So, hello from message from the Docker. Here, hello message from the Docker. So it is printing as hello message from the Docker. A hello world usually comes, so they are printing the hello as a Docker. This means it's working fine. Now we have running this image. So all the images, so it will show in here. If you put Docker dot images, so it will pull that images and dump into a local. So this is the your your image name and you can tag it whether it's a what version you have it's a, whether it's a latest or it's just 2.10 like that so this is an image id so when it was actually it's created and what is the file size of this image okay i show another one which is uh, i'll create one more uh, 
I mean, in the address called Docker or run. This time, uh, Docker run, I have something called I. Okay. So, this is the parameters. So, what I'm telling, Docker run, I'm going to run my in interactive mode. Okay. And my image name is something called DC box. Okay. If you're not specifying your tag, it will automatically pull the latest. Uh, okay, this also pulled. Now, right now, I have my pulled my, uh, it is running in my containers. Okay, see, if you're showing a cursor like this, you are running the image and you are, it is running in the containers actually. If you, so, if you put pwd so you are in the root part so i'll put ls here uh, so this is actually a bash command so in my container these are the folders are there these are the folders are there right now i am inside the containers i am not in that uh, uh, my virtual this is not my virtual folder part this is my actually the containers folder part okay so you can you can put here this is the thing so if you put uh, oh, it type here echo so since it's a different part so if you go to cd of dev here so right now you can see here I am in the container folders. Here you have all the your this is a folder sector. If you see here this path is there there. But when you go so when I click Control X oh, it's not everything. Just one second. If I put exit here, right, right now I have come out of the container. Okay, so if I put pwd, so right now I am in the outside the container. So there are two, there are two things here actually. So if this is my virtual box. In my virtual box, I am hosting my application into the container so when i put ls pwd so i am inside this container so right now i am exited the container if you put docker dot ps this will show the active containers right now i don't have an active container that's why it's not showing anything so any any active container active container sense any running container it will show in this status so any containers this this command will show docker.ps hyphen a. It will show active plus inactive. Means if already run and exited, also will show. See here, we have run two times of hello hold. And busybox we have run. And what command we used? SH. In that, this is a container ID. And this is the image name of that. So actually we use SH command where we have seen that LS, PW, T, everything we have seen. It is exited just one minute ago. Okay, now I will run the same container in a detached mode. So before that I have run in the active mode. Active mode in the sense like, so actively, I mean, it is very, whatever you type in actively you are doing. So when you when you exit it, the container will be destroyed automatically, and your container won't be available. I told no, it's like a virtual machine box. So once you are not using automatic, once we exit from the container automatically, your Docker will take care of that destroying that container. Okay. Now I will run the same uh, Docker busy box with detached remote. Okay. So let me run. So you have to put D here. Oh, I D. So I'm running in the 
ऐसे नीम के सामने बिजी बॉक्स ठीक है I have seen that once again. Docker running with so if you have anything you got it out, you can go to the Docker installation guide. Okay, we have to say name only, correct now. Docker, okay, I should give before that. So, if you come here, starting the Okay, option. Uh, let me try this to do actual name. Okay, so uh, see, this is my what I am doing is I'm running the container once again, and I'm just making one name to my container. Okay, this is a this is a name it will create with this image. Okay, and it will download it into my in my local. Right now, it is running this container still active, but I am running in a detached mode. So if you see the cursor actually uh, totally different, okay, it's showing in my my virtual machine part. If you want to see uh, the active container, I, as I told earlier, put docker.ps, see here. Right now it is active container. This is my container ID. Uh, I have given the name as detach. Initially it was taking a random value. Right now I have associated with this tag name. Okay, so right now this container is running into the uh, inactive mode. Okay, what we'll do is we'll go inside the container. Docker dot ps exe. So I'm going to inside the container, and you have to put the container ID. Okay, and what we'll do is. I'll put PWD. Okay. We'll put. See, you can see the root path. Now, what I'll do with I'll put ls. Okay. okay. Got it. So you can able to see the the folder structure inside that. Uh, that container okay so still my container is running now how to destroy this one you have to stop it now you have to put docker container so syntax if you can need help you can put here and here you can see stop so stop command is there mm. ah here yeah. to stop one or more running container so i'll put docker or oh, instead of the container id so you have to put the container id so this is somewhere created container id correct Uh, 
positive book and they rate it. No? It's taking time. Yeah. So once it returns as a container ID, means it got stopped. Now you put docker.ps. Yes, it got stopped. Now if you put docker.ps hyphen a see it. This, this is the exited just 14 seconds ago. This is the command which we are running the detached mode. Okay. And what do you put? We have put SH. Okay. So this is a, uh, running the container in, uh, I mean, I am running the container in a detached mode. Uh, in next video, what we'll do is uh, we will create our own custom image and we'll host that image into as a web application by using a .NET Core application. And we'll see how to map that port into the, into the container, uh, okay? Uh, thank you guys. We'll see you in the next lecture. Hi, in this video, we are going to uh, see uh, customize our own uh, Docker files. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to host uh, our web application uh, into a Docker containers. So I'm just taking, I have created my own project in uh, using a .NET Core as an application, as a web-based application. Uh, I already checked in into this part. Uh, in the in the description, I will add this uh, Git repo section. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to host this application into my Docker container and see how it looks, okay? So let me copy this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will go to my my Ubuntu machine. So right now I am in the root path. Okay, now I'll go inside this Docker container apps. Now I will clone this project. Okay, uh, yeah, successfully cloned. So if you go to Docker containers, this is my folder where you can see all my folder section. Okay, uh, now what we are going to do is uh, we will go to our Docker file. Okay, so if you see the Docker file, so basically what I'm telling to my uh, a Docker system is like, so he, here the set of instructions I'm going to tell to my uh, Docker. So here we will mention the set of instructions. So basically, if you want to run a .NET code, these are the dependency file is there. So I'm telling from where to you have to fetch it. So from will tell that where you want to fetch. So I'm telling that this image will be fetched from this ASP.NET 3.1 from the base. And I'm putting into my working directory as app. This is a folder. And I'm exposing the port number is 5010, okay? And after that, I need a SDK in order to run the, so this, we have developed this uh, ASP.NET Core in 3.1 framework. So I need a SDK in order to run this uh, framework into .NET uh, Linux box environment. And after that, I am putting into uh, this source code into SRC. Then what I'm doing, this this is my project actually. Let me give me overview of this project. This is my solution of this, my project. Uh, yeah. .NET Core, yeah, .NET Core dot apps. So this is my uh, .NET uh, solution file. Okay, and uh, if you see here, these are the my files actually. Basically, uh, what I'm going to do, this page I'm going to show you. In index or page, I'm just making welcome running under a Docker container. Okay, and this is a Docker file on this again. Which I've shown the same thing only. 
so this docker file i'm going to run it okay so these are the my these are the my uh, project uh, i mean my web application folder structure okay and if you come here so what i'm saying is like uh, okay so i will dump, put it into my src and after that i am copying or i am copying all the cs projects into put it into the my container application all these files i am going to put it into my uh, docker container application run dot dot net restore will run my uh, this uh, project and it will download all your dependency files okay so basically i am going to run uh, get the all the dependency file of this projects okay and next is i am just copying whatever there in this project just blindly copy into my container so i am going to src this is directly i am going to that cd of src and after that what i am going to do is i am going to build this project build it in a release mode and publish into app dot build and similarly i'm getting from the build as a publish now actually i'm going to this is i'm building the project and after that i'm going to publish this project into app dot underscore publish so where i'm going to publish is nothing but i'm going to app folder okay i'm going to app folder in that app folder i'm going to publish publish folder i am going to publish it okay and i am running the application as dot net okay now what we'll do is uh we try to run this project the next video what we'll do is uh first we will build this uh, uh docker file once you build it will become a docker image and after that we will run in a container in next video we will see this one okay uh thank you guys uh thank you guys hi uh in this video we are going to see how to build the image so right now i am in the linux box uh for syntax uh, okay let let me put ls so when you want to build a file you should uh, you should build with a uh, the file name of a docker file okay so what the syntax is telling docker build hyphen t uh, i think syntax is hyphen t okay i have to mention the path since uh, this is in our uh, it's in my root directory my file is located in my root directory so if you are creating a file with a different name you have to mention a name of the docker file since this is a standard file so you no need to mention your file name system will understand it uh, so no need to mention a docker file name okay because this is a standard name so docker will understand docker first will search for this file name um, so if you specify the name of the file then it will pick that name so i just want to see the sorry the syntax of the docker build so here see here docker build and i am putting the docker file okay uh you can put a name of the thing i just want to know target set a target to build a team in the target okay no need so what i'll do is i just build it so let me go to that path i'll close this window So ls, okay, we will go to Docker container. Ls, okay. So I have. Okay, I have Docker file. Yes, so I should 
have a good friend. It's not good. Ah, here it is there here. Okay. Now what I am going to do is I am going to build the Docker file. So once you build it, it will become an image. Docker. Oh, should use the spelling correctly. Docker build hyphen t. Let me put the image name. There put dot doc. You should do a lower case Docker. Docker container app. Okay. T is a tag. I think I uh, can't give name to this. First, I'll give the build it. Invalid reference of T. See here, build type in T, my name, share of the district. Okay. So I'll do the tag. Let's put uh, you give my name. Uh, why I'm giving this name? I'll tell you later. Okay. So bring this with Docker container. Oops, dot net apps. Um, Building in the root file where it is located, my it's located in my current path. And the permission denied. Try to connect this. Hour. Okay, cannot permission. The host of this. Okay, oh, I think it is fine to connect. Uh, we do one thing. Just give build of this. Mm. Also try to fetch my reporting. Docker hyphen T invalid Docker build. Let me give Docker for me. Tag is in One second, uh, just uh, uh, I think I have done a mistake. Actually, if you see the syntax here, uh, so what they're telling is uh, make a Docker build. T is a tag, it's a name to that. And if you give a dot, it means take a current file. Okay, let me try this one. Spell name build the B A L D build. Okay, I spent T. I'll put Docker container. And I put the current directory. Why should do that? We do one thing. I'm doing the file name again. Docker file. We 
speed image equals exactly one parameter. Okay, I'll do one thing. Just so give you a build without any tag. Okay, Docker build colon. It will build the current thing. No permission here. I cannot connect to socket. I think so. We have to log in. Docker login. Okay, so I have to log in to Docker ID. Let me check. Permission denied to connecting my socket is getting failed here. Once again, no? oh. so the issue is that uh, I didn't use sudo since I don't have permission, it's permission is getting denied. So, let me what do we do? Same thing, we'll put Docker build. Hyphen T is a tag which I'm tagging with my build image. So I'm going to put Docker container. I put uh, .NET apps container. I'll put. Okay. Now I will tell that it is running in my Docker file is in my root. So I'll give this. Build it. See, here, this is the file I written in the Docker file. So basically, it is downloading all this stuff, and what is happening is, I uh, try to find out this file, and it is building, no error, no warning, and in successfully build it, okay, and it is deployed into this container. Now what we'll do is, uh, we'll put a list. Uh, now if you go to Docker. Right now it is built at the image. If you go to Docker images, I didn't tag it. Ah, see here. Docker .NET container. This is a thing which just now we need to build it. Okay. Now, uh, now we have to run this application. Before running, I want to map it into this particular part. So you have to go to security group. What I do is uh, I will run it in. Okay. Okay. So I will host this port in this one. Okay, uh, so in security group I'm just checking because otherwise it will get denied. So okay, so right now we have built this one. In next session, what we'll do is we will force that uh, this image, image. I mean this part, this image, whatever we have run, we will host it into the container. Okay, thank you guys. So in the last video, what we have done is uh, we just created the uh, image. So in this video, uh, what we'll do is uh, we just created this this one second one now we will host this application into this port number um, 
this image i will post it in the docker container so basically what i am going to do is i am post this application here a website into this container okay by specifying some port number to that so i have any active thing i don't have any active thing let me check my hidden thing okay uh okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run uh so i'm going to run in detach mode and i'm specifying the port number so you have two port numbers one is external 808 and i have internal okay so 808 8080 is my external ip of this virtual box so this tells 808 is my virtual box ip address and 80 is my container ip address okay so uh, i'm right now i will ping the 808 uh, port number okay and i have to mention my what is my image id this is your image id one second that's not something yeah this one right click okay so right click if you copy it and if you just right click it will paste it here okay and after that oh this is my uh, this is my image name here i'm going to give what name it should come the name name of my container so i'm giving that dot net core apps okay now i will enter it okay so this is my container id see how big is this is a unique id so if you put docker hyphen ps See, initially I put Docker dot ps before running, so nothing was there. If I put Docker dot ps, see, this is a build ID which is generated right now. See, here, this 14 second out. So right now it is running in my 8080. So what I will do is, so what is my IP address? This my IP. So where I hosted, I hosted in 8080. Yes, that's it. So this is the file which is running in my container here. The Docker is running in my Docker container. I just started. This is a privacy test page. So if you go to my Git page. Sorry, not this. Okay, so this is a page which I just want to show you whether we are compose the file. Okay, this is the file which I used. Can you see it? Welcome to Docker, running under Docker container. Okay, that is the thing which is showing in my home. Under Docker container. For example, Docker container. And if we go to privacy page, privacy page for testing Docker container. So, privacy page for testing a Docker container. So this, this I have just shown you to understand that. Uh, See, I have not installed any .NET framework. I just hosted very, very fast. Okay, uh, I don't do downloaded any images or nothing. I mean, I didn't install any framework in the my virtual box. I just created, I created just a Docker file. In Docker file contains all my dependency file. It's pulled all my dependency file and it is run in the my virtual box. So in this way, in this way, it will be very fast in deployment. So in order to stop this, uh, dispose my Docker container. So what you can do is Docker stop of my container name. Let's stop it. Now my Docker container was stopped. Uh, if you go to ps 
so nothing is there tbs hyphen a equal to l all the inactive also so just uh, 13 seconds ago it is exited of this name so now it should not work if i click this page because i have disposed it will get time out got it so so right now we have hosted the application and we dispose the container okay so so that's it so in next video we will see some uh, something called network these are the networks so i'm not going to depth this is the uh, suppose you want to talk to the different uh, if i have multiple containers if i want to speak to the multiple containers you have to create a network so that that is a thing actually so and you have let me show you another one ah oh. okay sorry 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 no okay that's fine so okay uh right now we hosted the applications and uh we destroyed uh hosted the application and uh, we have destroyed the containers okay so we will see uh, uh we try to host some other which is some databases which is readily available in next video okay and we'll go to some basic commands like uh, uh some very very basic commands we'll check okay so right now we hosted the application container we dispose it we have run it okay mm, okay next video we'll see you thank you guys bye So in this video, what we'll do is uh, we will push the code, whatever we created the image, uh, into this Docker Hub. Uh, in order to create this, uh, what you have to do is uh, go to DockerHub.com. So let me sign out. You have to do a sign up for this page. So what do you do? You just register it to a sign up. So once you get it, uh, then you type your user and password and you log in. So in order to push this code, you have, you have a command for this. Okay, uh, let me get my images. Okay, so now I have to change my images with some tag. Okay, so because I want to push this code. Okay, so this is the reason. Okay, first one is the reason. So I have to rename my tag name. So what I have to do is uh, to rename. So because I want to push uh, this repository into my, I mean this image, I have to push it to my global, global repository. Right now it is in my local. Uh, I want to push it to a public repo, okay, such that anybody can use it. Uh, it's like a checking the code like that. So I'm just putting into my hub. So what I'll do is first I will rename with my with my user ID, okay. So uh, the syntax is Docker image ID. So one second, okay. Tag name I'm going to change. Tag with what is my existing image ID docker existing with new name so i have to give syntax this okay so i have to give my user id slash my repository name docker dot net apps okay so i'm going to 
change this name so it got changed so if you put docker images see here it got changed okay now what we'll do is uh, this is the app. now we will docker login it's asking the user id i have to put my user id my password is yeah login is succeeded now docker push i think you have to uh in time i think okay see push with option name and tag uh push with my registry host okay hmm. it's like this on this docker push what is my he created tag jepin rajagopa slash my Okay. Docker. Dot net. Yeah, it's pushing into my repo. So there is my Docker hub. just few second back it is pushed so tag is latest i didn't put any description so this is a thing which i created just now it is pushed successfully okay so size is 1792 uh that's it uh thank you guys uh and uh, in next video, I'll try to run some uh, run some Ubuntu or Jenkins servers and see uh, it will give a little bit uh, clarity on that. Okay, thank you guys.